Let's jump into the next game, Baxter. It is the Melbourne Storm. It's kind of, and I'll ask you this question, Baxter. The Melbourne Storm are that team that no one's really putting them in there as a premiership contender. Now, whenever I speak to someone and I go, oh, I, I think Penrith could go back to back to back if they keep playing how they're playing. And they go, yeah, but what about the Sharks? What about the Rabbitohs? What about the Broncos? And this team's just like, they're exceeding, but they're slowly just kind of flying under the radar at the same time. No one's really saying anything. They're like, oh, Xavier Coach has been terrible. He's not doing much. They're, not miss- they're missing Ryan Pappenhausen. What do you make of this squad? Do you have this team as a premiership threat? Or, again, are they flying under your radar coming into round 18? To write off any Storm squad under Craig Bellamy leadership uh, or even coaching regime um, would be a fool and a really silly one, to be quite frank. So, And I will agree they are flying under the radar because what is it, earlier on this season they were lose. They looked like what? was a, against the Titans, 34-32, you know, in a close one, which we all, I think 99% of the uh, the NRL um, or the Rugby League world had Melbourne to win that game. And it's just those sort of games we go, oh, shit, they didn't win it. Okay, maybe this is the end. Maybe this is Melbourne Storm's era coming to an end. But since that announcement of Bellamy going around one more year, I think, They've turned the corner and they've just been so quiet that they haven't really drawn any attention to themselves. Like, if I quickly just look at their that their um, score lines, they're winning in a margin of like one to eight mo- mostly of the mostly of the games. So it's not like they're winning forty to nothing where you go, oh look at the Melbourne Storm. You just go, oh Melbourne fourteen ten or something like that, and you. you don't really pay much attention to it. As I quickly, yeah, the biggest one was the Tigers, obviously, man, man, uh, the rebound of Manly last week. But, you know, 54, 54 to 10 of the Sharks, you know, and then they got beat by the Cowboys, 45 20 uh, away. Then they beat Dolphins, 24 16. They beat the Broncos, 24 16 again. Uh, they lost to the Rabbits. So it, it's really. Sort of a seesawing, and again, round eight, thirty to twelve, uh, thirty to twenty-two over the Warriors, and that was that was the Anzac Day. So it's been really a really quiet year for them um, in in terms of media um, eyes. And as, as I, I, t- I said before, I think they snuck they snuck around the corner very quietly, and they've won these games, but then also lost some easy ones too, which sort of keeps them floating underneath the radar and into third spot. Well, like we said, they're they're floating under the radar, but I think, and again, some of these teams aren't doing the best on a season. Some are flying, but their next four, they'll play Penrith in Melbourne, which we'll talk about Penrith after this. They then play the Roosters at the SCG. Again, the Roosters aren't playing well, but they're playing a lot better at home than they are away. They then play Newcastle in Newcastle, who have shown that they can be resilient. They only just lost to the Rabbits. Uh, sorry, to the Panthers. They've held up against teams. They should have beat the Roosters. They narrowly went down, but they're a strong force in Newcastle. They then take on the Parramatta Eels, who, again, a team that started so slow, is now jumping into that top eight, and they take on Penrith again. So I think the next five weeks, we're going to say, these guys are contenders, or maybe these guys are a potential chance but we don't think they're going to go all the way so they definitely well, do have some also they don't play they don't play at any park as well they're playing at marvel stadium which is an afl type ground yeah, which has got no, the no roof one's really playing at home for the next couple of weeks oh hold on the cowboys are so i don't see any no one important playing at home over the next couple of weeks the cowboys are so i don't know what are you what you're talking about but yeah look look it's marvel so it's not amy it's not the use like the crowd's going to be a little, a little bit further away from the field um so that could help Pemrith um and the likes of i think it's para when they ho- host them um so it could be a um a good thing going down to melbourne right now um but how, how is that like you got you got Melbourne uh, Melbourne Storm 
this weekend, and then five weeks later we got Penrith hosting the Storm. How should shouldn't you be like having to play more teams in the well, space between each? Don't forget that the Roosters played the Warriors twice inside six weeks to start like, the season. That, that, like how how does, how like, the NRL? Seriously, when they sit down and they pencil in and go, right, that looks good, just have a look at how many times, how many well, weeks. You've got to remember, Baxter, it's randomly generate. No, no, no. You generate so everybody plays each other once and then you can work out the back end of the season. That's what I reckon. I reckon, I reckon, he, here's my reckon, everyone plays each other once mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then based on the top eight last year, the top eight teams play each other again from last year. The bottom teams play each other again, and it's based on where you finished the year before. So I'm I happy think for that. that's it, – it's kind of like, I guess you could say, the NBA lottery pick, how they do the lower teams have more chance to get the better players. Well, let's give those teams that are struggling the better chance to get the better draw for the following year because yep. I'll, I'll be honest, I'm sick and tired when I look at a draw and I say – I'm just going to use them as an example, but Penrith playing the Tigers – 17 times and then you look at the Cowboys and they've got to play Melbourne twice in Melbourne. they got to play the Rabbits twice at a core and you're like, what's going on with this draw? So, what do you mean? What do you mean? The Tigers beat Penrith every time during Orange period. What are you talking about? Again, <laughs> another one. They say it's random, but every Origin period, guess who gets to play Penrith? But <laughs> it is an interesting one, Baxter. This is a team that is flying under the radar. They are sitting in the top four. They are definitely a premiership threat and like you said, once Bellamy got that I'm sticking around. I'm staying. They got Munster locked down. They've looked like a much better squad. So let's hope Munster can stay off the beers. He's not hung over this weekend and he does get to play in this game. But they are obviously taking on the Penrith Panthers. And we've spoken about this, I guess, every couple of weeks. We started the season and we went, we think that they can go back to back to back. We then got a couple of weeks in and we went, I don't know if they're going to go back to back to back. And now we're going, they're starting to hit their straps. They're winning games, and yes, Newcastle should have done a lot better, but they're winning games without Nathan Cleary. They're winning games when Luai's out. They're winning games when they rest all their origin players. It's not hard to beat the Newcastle Knights, especially with your five superstar player origin players out. Let's be be frank. Hold on, hold on. You take every single origin player out of Cowboys, they're going to struggle against the Newcastle Knights. Let's be completely honest. I don't know. We we did well the week before against the Penrith Panthers, so I don't know what you're talking about. You did well against the Penrith Panthers when they had all their players out too? Yes. Hey, hey, hey. Taking away both origin players, hey, we were the better team. Oh, I completely agree with that. I completely agree that if you take away origin players, they're going to play well. I just think... We just got the better team. Just, just, just when, yeah. When it, it, Hastings, but when Jackson Hastings has to come out to the media and go, oh, even without their players, they're they're a really good side. Like they're missing like seven first grade players, no, and your the, first the, graders can't step up. The biggest one was when Christian Welch went into the the press conference oh. after the game to talk to Craig Bellamy. And go, you see the Knights? They lost to Penrith, and they had five Origin players out. How do you not win? That, that that does it for me. No when another when whoever, another player from another team, up, whoever stitched him up with that microphone, I will be pulling them behind closed doors and going, "You do that again, I'm putting you for a war." All right? Because no, no, I'm. That hey, was... the cameras, the, the mics, cameras, they're always rolling. That remember that on and stitch-up. remember it's always rolling on and off the field. Well, it was an absolute stitch up, but I think we had the same reaction when we did see the result. I, I didn't watch much of this game. Oh, I, I loved a little it. Bit oh, at the I start. loved it. I missed it. a bit of the middle, and I was just sitting there going, they lost to the Penrith. What do you mean they lost to the Penrith? They got no play. So I'm kind of on Christian Walsh's side here because it was the same thought pattern that was going through my head. It was a great it was, game to watch. It was a great game. I mean, I've gone back and watched part of it, obviously, because my mate did play in the number 15 jersey in Lindsay, and he's, he's starting to get consistent time on that bench, consistent time on the field, but. I expected better from Newcastle. Now, the Roosters did beat them. That probably says enough. But they let's be honest, Newcastle beat themselves when they played the Roosters. I think Newcastle beat themselves here. Now, the one thing I will say is Peachy came in. He's not in there this week, but he did come in. He took his chance. He scored two tries. He looked absolutely unbelievable. I think Jack Cogger, it's not going to be long until teams start knocking on his doors and seeing if he's free like they did for... Um, Mr. Nathan Cleary 2.0, as you like to say. But I think with Luai being the player Luai is when he can go, 
be an idiot, jump around, do little steps, do little bunny hops. It allows Jack Cogger to just be there and go, I'm going to be the system player. If you get me the ball on the fifth, I'm putting up a bomb. If you get me the ball on the third, I'm flicking a pass. But what I also like to see, and I believe it was against the Cowboys when he did it, the last play of the game, everyone's like, okay, it's going to extra time. The game's over. And all of a sudden, he puts in a little chip and chase and almost gets it back. He's one bounce off catching it and going under the post. So I think it's good that he can switch can, between. I want to give. Oh, keep going. Sorry. Oh, I just. I think I'll let you jump in, but I think it's good that he can switch between. I've got to stay as a system player, and if my team needs something, I'll jump in and I'll try and do something miraculous and something crazy to fix it. But Baxter, I'll throw it to you. What were you trying to say? Oh, I was just going to say there's uh, four pl- four big players coming off contract. At the end of this year, in this current side, that is Dylan Edwards, Jerome Loy, Liam Martin, and your mate Lindsay Smith. Ah, uh, Lindsay's twenty twenty four, bro. Yeah, oh, he hasn't Lindsay's signed. He hasn't signed. He hasn't, he hasn't signed. He hasn't signed. I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Zero I'll tackle. Twenty twenty four. No, 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 no. All right, fine, fine. Take him out of it. He's signed. Dylan Edwards, Jerome Loy, Liam Martin. You can only keep two. You got to get rid of one. Due to Salo Cup. In your own opinion, who do you keep and who do you release? Uh, are you telling me that they're over the salary cap or are you asking me if they're over the salary cap? No, 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 no. Because of their salary cap, because Liam so hypothetically, Martin will, yeah, will have to get a big upgrade. Uh, I think Jerome Lua will have to get an upgrade due to his international and back-to-back wins. Liam Martin, State of Origin, Australia, back-to-back win, uh, comps and Dylan Edwards. The Clive and um, back-to-back uh, wins as well. So because say, of that, who do you who do you keep and who do you release? You've got to I'm going to start off on the record and say I think they keep all three. I don't think they replace uh, they replace Spencer Lino and they use that money to top up everyone else's contracts. I think they're mm-hmm. beneficial that Teddy probably will play game three. It might be his last Origin, but he will play. So that keeps Dylan Edwards out of that international and representative football. So his contract might go from 500000 to seven hundred instead of that million dollars that some people are saying that he could potentially be worth. Um, Liam Martin, massive contract. I think he gets a lot of Spencer Lenu's money. They top off Luai, but if I had to release one of those players, I'd probably release Liam Martin if I'm being completely honest because what I've seen at Penrith is every time they have injuries, they bring in a forward, they do the job. Look at Lindsay. He was on the bench. He was waiting for his time. He was constantly in the extended bench. He gets on the field and the commentators can't get enough of him. They rave about him. He does this. He does this. He does that. And we know Penrith Juniors. They've got players. Dylan Edwards, he's going to be a generational talent. Let's be completely honest. He's going to be that player that... Minicello, for example, with the Roosters, people would be running around going, I want to be like Mini. You've got kids going, I want to be like Latrell. They're doing the bunny celebration. I think Dylan Edwards is going to turn into that player over the next five, six years where it's not just Penrith players, Penrith supporters idolizing him. Heaps of people are. Luai, he's Penrith born and bred. You're not going to get rid of him. He's got that combination with Cleary oh. and he uh-huh. compliments uh-huh. Cleary. He compliments Cleary. And I think that's the biggest thing. But I think you're going to have a different answer. I think oh, you're going to I'd, 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 re- I'd re- remove, remove Luai. I think the stockpile of halves that Penrith got, you can easily fit in a six to go play Nathan Ball. I think it's it, it, it's a big – and I, we could see it when um, Kikau went to the Dogs. You saw the left side of their attack really demoralise, like dimin- diminish, like when it come down to that – like when it come down to those – Nitty gritty parts where I think if you have that, like if you keep Liam Martin there, you not only have a player who plays Origin, but also you have someone who you can trust that will do the job and is not better. We've seen it in State of Origin game one, we saw it in game two. I would be honest, I'm not getting rid of him. Liam Martin, if I had to, if we had to pick a three on. Who I had to rank, Liam Munn, I am keeping is a must. Dylan Edwards is another must. He comes second. And in our hypothetically of who, who, who do we release, I'm re- releasing Luai. Nothing for anything, but I just think 
that you can basically play Nathan football and you can fit another, you could bring in um, Sonny Luke or, uh, you know, you could put Jack Cogger to six and just play Nathan ball. And then if, if, you know, you get a situation where Nathan's out yet again, Jack's been at six. He can just slot to seven. He, he's not coming in and out of the team. He's already in the team. He's just playing seven, and you can just fit Jamin Tannen to six if you have to. That's that's my opinion because it's really hard to replace an Edwards at fullback going into next season when you've got no Stephen Crichton there and Lindsay, uh, not Lindsay, Liam Martin is a big miss in the, in the second row, especially le- left side being Scott Sorison. He doesn't play that much compared to Liam Martin. And I think going forward, that would be a stronger forward pack. Um, nothing against Lua. If I could, as I said, if I think they're going to keep all three with the uh, Spencer Linu issue, um, moving to the Roosters and they're going to soak up some of his money. Um, and Stephen Crichton as well. Um, who's the, uh, Tyler May still is still out. So really Crichton goes, Tyler May comes in. Where I think they've solved their backline problem, and they're going to use both their players to upgrade both. So I don't, yeah, I don't think they're going to get released any any of them. But in a hypothetical world, sorry, Lua. Yeah, obviously, like I said, um, like we both said, we don't think they're going to get rid of them. Um, it, it's kind of, let's be honest. I think they could get rid of any one of those players, and in about five six weeks' time, we'll be going. Holy shit, where did they get this youth player from that's absolutely tearing up the competition? So <laughs> I think their safety is to come. But obviously, speaking about Jerome Luai, obviously everything that did come out post-Origin, we won't talk on it too much, but it's come out that he was receiving death threats. So I'm not going to say, well, I'm going to say, I don't agree with the death threats. Let's get that out there straight away. Mm-hmm. I, I think someone needs to go into these players because it's not just Luai, but someone needs to go in and someone needs to, even if it's 24 hours after a game, we are managing your social media because emotions are high. He's reading these messages. He's gone and put the message out saying, shut up, you idiots. You've got work in the morning with no context. And everyone's kind of just gone, is he blowing up at the blues? Is he blowing up the commentators? Is he blowing up the supporters? It's then come out that he received death threats. So, again, we don't condone the death threats, but just quickly – what do you make of that social media post? Do you think it's more of a, let's not, if you're going to post on social media, I'm all for naming and shaming. If someone sent you a death threat, post their picture online, show everyone who it is, give it to the club, get the police involved, let them know who it is. But posting on social media, is that, what do you make of that? If it's what, like he did, where it gets taken out of context. First of all, I'm not a big social media poster in a say, like, I, I keep my friends' uh, list very, very short and neat. Um, I only allow the select few to view my social media, and I've always and I've always had this stance of after any game, just don't go on your phone. Don't worry about it. If 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 anybody who isn't irrelevant to you is, uh, it, for me, it's it's waters off off a duck back for me like I wouldn't care like you could send me the you know a million death threats to me after you know game two like I'm putting myself in Jerome Lua I, I wouldn't care me I wouldn't wouldn't care you're nothing to me you have no stance in my life I don't know you from a uh, from a uh, what is it from a bar of soap so I wouldn't care, but if you want to, if the NRL want to employ someone to look after my social media account for 20, 36 hours after whatever and be my guest, I wouldn't care. I won't go on it. I'd talk to the people that, you know, you, my family, other other friends as well, um, and that, that's it. If you're not a part of it, I'll, you, you, your voice is useless to me. But I'll also say, like, when... When the going is good for them, you, you know you, you you absorb all the love and everything. But as soon as it goes um, goes wrong and goes sideways, I'm not saying take it, but there's a certain line you shouldn't cross. And I think deference is a big crossing on that line. But you know, a simple like like you're a joke or little things, 
to law, like, or in response to that, yeah, fine. But death threats, there's no point. What's the what's the point? Really, really, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're not going to do that. You're not going to go and find and stab his family or whatever. You're not going to do it. Pipe down. Yeah, hundred percent. Like we said, we hope that Luai is doing all right. We hope he does bounce back, and whatever death threats it was is dealt with in a, I guess, a severe manner. Because something like that, it can't be taken lightly. Because we never know what someone might do or what might happen. So obviously, we hope he is all right. Backstart. Let's keep moving. We're moving into the team that you oh. had in the top four. Oh, predictions. Predictions. That's. Uh, I'm going to storm one to twelve. I am going to go Panthers 1-12. to I think they win this game. I think they get the job done, and I think they obviously move on. Um, but I do think this game can swing. It can be a two-point game, can be a four-point game. It could be decided in the final minute. But 